Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, kia ora katoa, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Barry asked me to, uh, to focus on a low-carbon uh, city, and so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I just want to relate that to a sustainable city, because each one of us will have an idea of what sustainability is, but for me, a sustainable city is one that takes um, an informed and intelligent long-term collaborative approach to economic, social and environmental uh, challenges. And I'm not going to argue climate change because as Barry said, there's always uh, two, two percent nay naysayers in the audience, so um, mm -hmm. I'll just accept uh, climate change and I'll accept the challenge that we need to reduce carbon emissions. Now, <clears throat> our research at the Energy Centre has, um, has shown that we can meet our obligations um, our national target of 90% <coughs> our, our, from renewable uh, sources of electricity by 2025. So that's quite doable. Uh, other countries that I've been working with, they struggle to reach 10 or 20%. So <coughs> we're doing okay in that, in that respect. However, when it comes to reducing CO2 emissions, uh, agriculture and transport <coughs> remain our biggest challenge. Um, and agriculture does not feature in the Auckland economy majorly, so I'm going to push that to the side, and in any event, there are no solutions on the horizon to the <clears throat> greenhouse gas emissions that are coming from agriculture. But Auckland faces major challenge, and I've got 10 minutes to, to focus uh, on some of these, and I'm going to focus on transport, as others have, uh, and link transport with urban design and, and economic growth. So what steps can Auckland take, uh, what steps can Auckland Council take what steps can Auckland business, for-profit, non-profit, and the community take uh, to address the transport challenge? Now, council, to me, in a very simple level, has got two major instruments. It can, it can use uh, urban planning, urban design, and it can invest in infrastructure. So those are the, the tools, the, the two major tools that it has. Now, urban planning is significant. Intensification, as proposed by the unitary plan, whether you agree with that or not, has benefits. So we could imagine greater use of public transport. We could associate with that might be lower CO2 emissions and the saving in transportation costs. So those that might be some of the benefits. The local economy might benefit from the agglomeration benefits, so businesses uh, working uh, closely together. And the community itself, I think, as Viv has illustrated here, can derive numerous social benefits from uh, a sense of place. But there are no free lunches in a world of scarcity. Um, and we need to be aware of the impacts of intensification uh, on our natural capital, that the, um, the place that we have that we, call, that we call Auckland. So, for example, biodiversity it's been found to decrease as the percentage of impervious area increases in the city. Now, furthermore, in, a, in association with um, urban growth, and Michael mentioned the abuse that we visited upon the, the harbour earlier, we find elevated concentrations of lead, of zinc, and of copper in cores taken from our inner harbour. And these are the legacies that we um, uh, have to deal with going forward. Now, lower water quality here enters the food chain. Um, it impacts the functioning of our ecosystems. Now, careful urban design here can, uh, such as urban uh, riparian planting and green spaces, can re reduce the adverse effects of uh, intensification. Turning to economic growth, I see economic growth as being essential for achieving a sustainable city. Auckland accounts for about 30% of, um, of New Zealand's GDP and it is dominated by the services sector. Going forward, Auckland's contribution is not going to change. In fact, it's likely to increase uh, with the, the growth that's projected for Auckland. So this underpins, I think, the importance of profitable business for sustainable growth. With the digital economy here, we will see new business models emerge. New business models based on lower transaction costs, lower coordination costs, and improved productivity. Future-proofing urban development and planning that supports innovation and growth will contribute to both emission reductions and to profitable business. Now, turning to investment, um, 
<coughs> for a, a really good example, a recent example, I think, has been the benefits of rail electrification in Auckland. It has reduced CO2 emissions by 82% over a period when ridership has increased. So that's one of the benefits associated with investment. Now, investment in transport infrastructure will surely lower congestion levels for a time. But what the data show is that eventually, <coughs> as the city grows, congestion will again increase. So we're going to be dealing with it again in 10 or 20 years' time. But what about the notion of a smart city? Now, some of you might be aware of Singapore's plan to have a fully automated electric vehicles uh, in the city by 2030. So fossil fuel and car, burning cars are going to be gone. And so you'll be getting into an electric vehicle um, and tell it where you want to go and it'll take you there. So let's, let's, let me just offer a few thoughts about a smart city. Smart buildings, for, a, for, a, for an example here. The work that we've done with Genesis Energy shows that households can reduce their electricity consumption by around 18% by using smart technology in the household. So that's a demand side innovation that contributes to the reduction of CO2 emissions. Turning to solar, we've, we're completing a study of Auckland Solar Potential in collaboration with Auckland, um, Auckland Council. And, the, and as was mentioned earlier, I think Rod mentioned that, that the council has a target of powering 170,000 homes um, by solar. Now, solar brings the potential of reducing uh, energy consumption uh, from households. But achieving this target is going to require collaboration with the energy sector and particularly the lines companies in order to achieve these targets. So this is an example of supply-side innovation that can contribute to lower um, CO2 emissions. So I see both council <coughs> and business playing a role in the development of a low-carbon city. Now, turning to local elections, and I <coughs> don't want to enter into politics here, but local elections are imminent, and we're moving into an area and in, into an era of the unitary plan and also the legacy um, associated with earlier councils. And I want to highlight the concern that I have with democracy at the local level here. Voter turnout in the general election is around 60 to 70 per cent of eligible voters. So that's the, 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 the general election. Now turning to the local election, the turnout here has fallen from 50 per cent down to 36 per cent in 2013. So 36% of our eligible voters in local elections, this is national here, not Auckland, here turn out to vote. And importantly, I think, only 33% of those in the 18 to 25 age group vote. Now, by way of contrast, as you go up the age, um, um, yeah, go up with ages here, okay, you find that 70 to 80% of the people in their 50s, 60s and 70s turn out to vote. So the question that I have is that why has voter turnout in local elections declined? Um, and are eligible voters connected in any way with the outcomes of council policy and plans? And does council know for example, what is important to our younger cohort? Because these are the people that are going to inherit the decisions that we are making today. So to uh, follow on that, that line of thought, the digital age creates an opportunity for smart governance. Smart governance through the use of technology, digital technology enables the community to participate in policy that is guided by data that is captured by smart technology. And so in order to achieve the outcomes of a sustainable city, council will need to know its community and their concerns better, and maybe that will lift their participation in these local elections. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm.